Ladies and gentlemen, a brilliant man, a great wit, and I'm happy to say a great buddy, Mr. Orson Welles. The Namath story begins in Beaver Falls in Pennsylvania, an obscure town whose principal industry was the manufacture of steel. Every Saturday night, the big thrill was to sit around and listen to the town rust. <laughs> when Joe was born, he doubled the population. By the time he got to high school, he was personally multiplying it. <laughs> it was evident when Joe was born that he was preordained to become the legend that he is today. At the moment of delivery, the doctor slapped him on the behind and both of his knees went bad. <laughs> As for me, my purpose here tonight is not oration, but narration. It's my pleasant task to provide the spoken accompaniment to this film you're just about to see, displaying as it does some highlights from the Namath Saga. Once upon a time, there was a magic bean that had a magic spell, and fame and glory would belong to whomever could throw it straight and handle it well. All across the land, wise men plotted and planned to see if they would be the man who could hold this bean in hand. But alas, it was such a difficult task that no solution could be found. So they dashed it and smashed it in anger on the ground. Now, far, far away, in a kingdom on the coast, there was a little prince who made a mighty boast. I'll throw that bean, he said, and straight I'll make it go. There's no doubt about it, said the boy named Broadway Joe. Now to make this story short, I'll have to report that Broadway Joe was right. For in his arm was a magic charm that controlled the bean and its flight. Broadway Joe traveled far and wide and threw the bean so well that everyone gathered round him to tell him he was swell. Scores of lovely maidens attended to his wants, and a guard of honor followed him to all his usual haunts. Then from out of the ground there came a sound that shook the entire shore. It came from the thread of some men who said, This Joe is simply a bore. From their fearsome faces smoke did spew, while their heads were as hard as an old horseshoe. They were rough and tough, and worked all day in the sun. They were cranky and cruel, and spoiled other people's fun. But Joe's days were filled with smiles and zest, and he turned to these villains and said with a jest, if I happen to meet you guys someday, huh, it'll be best for you to get out of my way. What's that? Growled those men who were terribly gruff. How can you say such ridiculous stuff? We'll meet you in battle and steal your bean, then use it ourselves to be nasty and mean. And so it came to pass in a big round castle way down in the south, that these merciless men came to take the bean and shut Joey's mouth. The castle was filled with faces familiar and faces stranger, but all of them knew that Joe was in danger, so they gathered together, put their hands on their breast, and sincerely wished him their very best. But Broadway Joe needed luck of more than one kind, because suddenly trouble came from in front, and then from behind, they gave him such a knock on the crown that he forgot his bean and left it on the ground. The meanies in blue grabbed the thing and turned it over to their old wizard king. Now everyone rose and stood in alarm to see if the ancient wizard still had magic in his arm. Now in his prime, many ages ago, he could have thrown that bean and hit a dime. But by now his magic arm had spent its force. When he threw the bean, 
It just fluttered, of course. The wizard's men looked solemn and tragic, and sadly they spoke. This bean's not magic, it's a fraud, a joke. Give it back to the kid. If it obeys his command, we'll admit defeat and crown him king of the land. But the bean was magic, and everyone knew it, and watched in amazement whenever Joe threw it. He hopped and he popped and he swung with a swish, and the bean had obeyed his every last wish. As darkness fell on this incredible day, the meanies in blue just faded away, and everyone cheered for Broadway Joe, for he had put on such a spectacular show. His beam was turned to silver, as bright as the eye could see. And Joe returned a hero to his kingdom by the sea. Put together by 